Well, welcome to One Verse. In this episode, we have Todd Hostetler, pastor at City on a Hill Teaching Center, and Jeff Millslagle, the program director at WLMB. Now, they don't know ahead of time what verse they will be discussing, but I will now give them a verse that I have selected at random. Jeff, you're going to be going first. Okay. In, is, ready? It's the New yeah. Testament. It's Romans 11, 24. That's Romans 11, 24. For if you were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, who are natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? That's <laughs> Romans 11, 24. Go for it. <laughs> okay. This is fun because uh, literally last evening, my wife and I were talking about this basic concept. I, I'm not much of a grower, okay? So, so I'm only going by things I've read. I can't plant anything that survives. But uh, I, I understand you can do this to certain trees, and olive trees are, I guess, one of these, where you can actually put a branch into a tree you, that they make this certain slice and they put this thing in there. There's a technique to it, and I know there's all sorts of ways they have to fertilize a tree and wrap the branch and all that stuff, but they actually graft in something. And, and, and Paul's talking about this because he's making this point of how we Gentiles being grafted into this tree, uh, this, 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 this Jewish tree. So that's why, that's why we can call ourselves sons and daughters of Abraham when even when even when we're in a physical sense not, you know, because we're we're um, you know we don't we're Gentiles, but yet we can we can be, be called sons and daughters of Abraham, children of Abraham, you know, because we are being being grafted in here. So Paul's kind of making this uh, point here, and I, I got to kind of grab some quick context here of exactly where he's getting at. Uh, he he wants us uh, like the very next verse. He wants us to understand that this would be a, a great mystery. This is a great mystery here of this, of how God does this, because he has his chosen people, and yet we Gentiles are able to be grafted in with that. We are able to be considered, in a sense, Jewish, quote-unquote, because we are now grafted into this body of Christ, which is now the real the real amazing, uh, amazing chosen people, as Peter actually later on calls us this chosen people, peculiar people, he says, this chosen generation. So uh, this is just kind of fun how Paul is using this thing, which would have been more common, I think, to first century people, uh, agrarian society, being able to do this stuff all the time with, with olive trees. But when I read that, you're cut out of a wild olive tree. It's wild by nature. So it's this uh, odd thing. You're going to be grafted in you're going to be grafted into this good olive tree. I just think it's kind of cool how we can be, we're, we're this, and you, well, obviously there's various ways you could look at this, but testimonies of people that have been really, you know, kind of wild in their own life and now they're grafted into the tree uh, of where their life has changed. There's a whole bunch of ways you could take a look at that, but that whole idea of uh, growing and, and grafting and working on olive trees is fascinating. One last thing I'll leave, and I'll leave, let's turn this over to Todd here. I remember being in Israel, being in a garden of Kisenami, and they had some really, really, really old uh, uh, olive trees. And the belief was that some of these were actually around during the time of Jesus. And I got some pictures, uh, real close pictures of, of olives, and I had not really seen wild olives like that from a tree lately. And I thought, man, that's just absolutely amazing, all those visual things that Jesus was talking about that he was able to apply that, uh, that uh, just show up all the time in scripture. So anyhow, so that's why I'm thinking about that grafted in thing. All right, Todd, you're going to go ahead and correct me on this because I know <laughs> you have a better way of looking at this. Go ahead. <laughs> no, that's all good stuff. And, and I love that in this chapter, uh, Paul is talking to the Romans and he's talking about the Jews, part of what he's talking about. So as you had mentioned, as Paul is talking to them, uh, he is letting them know, well, if you look at the very first verse in that chapter, verse number one, he says, I say them, God has not rejected his people, has he? May it never be. For I am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, the tribe of Benjamin. So in context, in this entire chapter, what Paul is talking about is that God has not forsaken the Jewish people. And this is a mistake that is, tends to have been made over the last several hundred years in Western churches and in Western culture, is there is the, the mindset that says, well, we who are believers in Jesus Christ, Gentile believers, we are the church today. We have replaced the Jews because the Jews rejected Jesus. Well, Paul is saying in this chapter, has God rejected his people? No, no, of course not. Never yeah. let it be said. That's impossible. And then he goes on to give the illustration. And he's saying that 
Uh, Israel often in the Old Testament is uh, symbolized by different things, and olive, an olive tree is one of them. And so he's saying that the Jewish people, they are this olive tree. They're the people that were chosen by God for the specific purposes of his word and uh, just working through them. Um, but God's intention in the Old Testament, it's clear, has always, bring, has always been to bring in the Gentiles. But the original tree, the olive tree, represents the Jews. So the Jews did reject Jesus. And how did you and I? Well, it's because you and I, because the Jews rejected Jesus, so now God has brought in the Gentiles, and we have come in, and the purpose is that we will make the Jews jealous, because here we are, we have the promises. We are living out the promises of God, because we understand that Jesus is the Messiah, and we're living all of the promises, not just the promised land promises. We're living all the promises of heaven, all the promises of the spiritual realm. And we were grafted into that tree. So the, the original tree is the olive tree. But then when it talks about the wild, we are the wild branches that have been grafted in. Now, it also says, if you go back a couple of verses before that, it says in verse number 17, but if some of the branches were broken off and you being a wild olive were grafted in amongst them uh, and become a partaker with them of the rich root of the olive tree. So we have all the promises of the Lord. But a lot of people read that verse and they say, well, if some of the branches are broken off. So they read that as, so the Jewish people are branches that are broken off the tree. In other words, God has rejected them. That's not the case. If you look at that word broken there, it actually means, it doesn't mean severed. It just means it's been broken. It's still attached, but it's broken. And God is going to restore that again. So this just lets us know that we have a role. We have a purpose as the body of Christ today to live out the word of God, uh, to be that uh, branches that have been grafted into. And one of the things that Paul does say in Ephesians and here, he's talking about these things. And one of the things that he does say is that he is not yet done with the Jewish people. And in fact, Paul says, and this is why this is important for you and I to have a heart for the Jews and to pray for the Jews. Paul says, when he talks about the Jews and the Gentiles. He calls us, those who walk in him. He says, the Jews and the Gentiles are one man. In Jesus, they are one man. We need to have a heart for the Jews, and that starts by having a heart for Jesus Christ and living his word so we can bring the Jews, make them jealous of what they see, and bring them in to the fold of Jesus Christ as their Messiah. Mm -hmm. Jeff? Well, let me uh, kind of piggyback onto that. It's actually verse 20 I wanted to mention because uh, Paul, uh, Paul makes this point of saying because of unbelief, they were broken off. And you stand faith. Earlier, he's made this point about us being grafted in there in verse 17. These wild branches grafted in. He said, you stand by faith. Do not be haughty, but fear or reverence or respect. So, so what he's saying is don't get the uh, uh, conceited sort of idea that you're so big and bad and we Gentiles are so, you know, because we've accepted Jesus and those Jewish people haven't. And he said, no, you have to live by faith here. Do not be haughty and, and conceited about this. They, like us, we both, we have to live, we have to live by faith and trusting in what Jesus has done for us because we like, like Todd said, we are, we are together, we are together as one body, both Jew and Gentile together. So yeah, that's a great passage there from, uh, from Romans chapter 11. So thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on One Verse. Thank you.